they call him the hangman. When the handbell says dead or alive, the rest of us just shoot you in the back and up on top of perch somewhere and bring you in dead over a saddle. But when John Roof the hangman catches you, you hang. I love the fact that you stayed in the audience at the premiere last night and watched it with the audience. Is that just because you're a puppet master and you like to see the characters move in front of you? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I mean, that's one of the reasons. Uh, the, the other reason, but there's a, a few other reasons. I mean, um, I make my movies to watch them yeah. with an audience, you know? And frankly, to tell you the truth, it's the, I mean, one of the things I like about cinema is it's forever or ever, how long forever is. From now until the celluloid <laughs> burns up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, forever seems to be getting shorter and shorter <laughs> as time goes on. But, uh, uh, but the thing about it, though, is, but as far as actually watching it mm. with an audience that's just truly investing in it in a thing that night. I mean, even if you watch it in a revival house 20 years later, it can be fantastic, but it also is sort of already an artifact by that time. Now. Nothing wrong with that either. But there is this, you know, everyone who saw it that night was seeing it for the first time. Yes, and it has a certain energy to it. It has a certain energy to it, and I almost feel that it's like, um, it's the missing sound element, all right? It's like, you know, you make the movie, then you, you do the sound mix, and you add the, so uh, the sounds and the crushes and the booms and the this and the that, and then you, you add the, uh, the music and it's that, but it's missing that, that sound of yeah. the audience reacting to the movie, whether it be the laughs, or whether it be um, uh, the gaffs, whether that be the legitimate appreciative laughs, whether it be the horrified laughs. I mean, there was like a, just as a moment, there was just, uh, there was this lovely, lovely moment where um, when the character, the Jennifer Jason Lee uh, plays Domergu, there's a letter in the movie written by Abraham Lincoln and she spits on the letter. And there was a literal gasp in the was, audience. There was yeah. like, <gasps> and I go, the Australians give a damn about the Lincoln letter? <laughs> so so when, you're, when you're editing the film, when you're editing the film, do you leave spaces kind of knowing that people are gonna have those reactions? No, I don't leave spaces for it, but I'm always hearing it. Yeah. I'm always hearing it. You know, I'm, I'm hearing the laughs as I write the movie. I, I'm hearing the laughs when I watch the scenes. Uh, I'm hearing the last as I'm editing the scenes. And so there is this aspect that this is when I finally get what's always been in my head. Yeah. And I see how right or how wrong I am of it. But the other reason that I watched it is about the fact that every country is going to have a slightly different audience who's going to react to the movie yeah. in a slightly different way. And look, I, I'm not going to be here for three weeks so I can just watch it randomly in about, you know, four different cinemas and just make up my own mind about how the Aussies have taken the film. <laughs> All right. Instead, uh, I have I have that screening, <laughs> you know, to watch the yeah. takeaway. <laughs> which audiences around the world, and you can be totally honest here, which audiences in which country are the absolute best? the most responsive? Well, you know, God, you know, it would have to depend on the movie. Yeah? It would actually depend, you would have, you'd have to, yeah. Uh, of all uh, of your films. Ask about which, well, huh? Of all of your films, which has got the absolute best reaction? It's a two-part two question. Yeah, go ahead. Two-part answer was watching Inglorious Bastards in, uh, in the, uh, uh, the Berlin premiere and watching Inglorious Bastards in the Tel Aviv premiere. Yeah, Those right. were absolutely positively the strongest reactions I've ever had to watching one of my movies with an audience. Makes total sense. Yeah. Of all of your different films, which film for you personally has been the steepest learning curve? The movie you've gotten, you've learned the most lessons from? Very good question. Um, I would say it would have to be the Kill Bill movies. I had never mm -hmm. made a movie with that kind of a, 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 on that big of a canvas before. I had never made a movie in another country before, i.e. China. <laughs> <laughs> um, Which I imagine is an incredibly easy and simple thing to do. Yeah, well, it, it wasn't that hard actually, but it, it did require a different, a, a slightly different mindset, but that actually became quite wonderful uh, when you did it. Um, you just had to get there. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, I'd never, I'd done little tiny action scenes, but I'd never done gigantic set piece action scenes that were meant, you know, the House of Blue Leaves 
fight was meant to be like the uh, uh, helicopter raid in Apocalypse Now. It was meant to be an end-all action sequence, and it took us about eight weeks to do it. it one of the best times I've ever had in my life doing something <laughs> like that. Um, you know, but working in that kind of uh, uh, that type of level of creativity and that type of level. I mean, if you don't like the movie, maybe it wasn't that creative. But if you, but that, that type of level, and more or less being able to do what I want and th and to get it exactly the way I wanted was a was a, a, a real real lovely thing and it was a you know, and, and and there was a learning curve from that point on I think up until that point in time I held on to my amateurness a little bit more almost like a badge of honor frankly, like this, the you. indie film the, yeah the indie Nani film thing, and yeah. you know I was like no oh, I don't want to join the director's guild because you know those, those are professionals <laughs> I, I, I'm holding on to my amateur quality <laughs> Holding on to my little vaguely <laughs> new wave cred, all right. Uh, after I did Kill Bill, I, I said, okay, no, I'm. A, I make blockbusters. I, I'm, I'm a professional filmmaker. You've put so much effort into the look and the feel of the film, and watching it in 70 mil last night was amazing. The colors are so rich, the blacks are so black, mm -hmm. and yet the film was leaked online. And I wonder for you personally, if you could say anything to the person. Imagine they're sitting in front of you right now, the person who uploaded that film. What would you say to them? I, I appreciate you trying to give me that opportunity, but I, I kind of almost don't want to deal with it. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like I, I've, I've tried to uh, uh, put it out of my mind. Yeah, that, I can appreciate that, that. That happened. Oddly enough, if it had happened to any one of my other movies, I would have been more devastated. Why is that? This movie was about the movie. It's not really about it even being a success, and that's not me being an irresponsible jerk. I want the film to do as well as it possibly can, but at the end of the day, I think it will, in the course of its lifetime, do very well. Mm. All right, but this was about kind of the movie. This is the you know, the, you know like in the case of *Inglorious Bastards*, it was very very important that we had a really great opening weekend. In the case of uh, *Django*, it was really important that we had a really great opening weekend. This wasn't so important. This was about the movie. <laughs> You have certain actors that you return to over time. Obviously, Samuel L. Jackson is one of those. How quickly can you tell that they're about to join the Tarantino posse? Do you know it from the moment you meet them, or do you have to see them on screen first? It's not so much seeing them on screen. It's more about, um, and it's really, and it's really not even about even auditions or anything like that. Somebody can do a really good audition in the room and whatever, and they, yeah, and they can be really interesting and fun to work with, i.e., going through a rehearsal. But when you're actually doing the movie with them, you know, how secure are they with my dialogue? Mm -hmm. uh, 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 do they turn it into the poetry slash music slash stand-up comedy <laughs> slash rap that it's supposed to be? Mm. You know, does that, uh, 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 are they... Uh, are they able to do that? Or are they unable to do that? Do the words stick in their throat? Uh, do they have a hard time? Uh, uh, are they lazy about learning their lines? Or you know, all yeah, right. all these kind of you know, do they get the sense of humor going on? Do they get the do they get the jokes even though they're not quoted as jokes? <laughs> do they get all the? And that's only a, a thing that you can really learn by 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 doing it with the people. Yeah. When you hear it right, does there is there a little tingle that goes up the back of your neck? Oh, it's. It's the greatest feeling in the world, frankly, to me. And um, and luckily, I have you know I, I cast I cast the right people usually. <laughs> so it's like uh, I have those feelings many times a day. All right, and that's one of the things that makes it so joyous. Just lastly, before I leave you, when can you tell that a movie is done and you are happy with it? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, I don't know about other directors. I actually think this is probably a problem that other directors have. I know it's a problem I have. Um, in editing, you usually think the movie's done before it's done. Yeah, right. <laughs> you kind of you kind of want it to be over. I mean, in just so far as like, okay, I did what I wanted to do. Boom, and now you're moving on to the next process, which is sound mixing by yeah. that point in time. But usually you're pushing it a little bit. You know, no, you're not quite done yet. There is, uh, there is one or two more passes literally to be done here. You just want to be done, but it's not done. <laughs> Quentin Tarantino, The Hateful Eight is done, and it's very good. Thank you so much for your time. What a lovely interview. Thank you so much. The pleasure was entirely mine. <laughs>